everybody. It's Tamara Thompson with Video Marketing for Business podcast. And I'm really excited and super grateful because I have a great guest today, Amanda Yeager. And you know what? My business partner, Danielle, actually found her TikTok and she was literally like texting me all these videos. And I was like, now this is fun. This is creative. And this is how to grow your TikTok channel, especially when you're out there, you have your, your everyday job and things like that. But to build influence online with creativity, I was like, this woman I have to meet. So uh, I had a pleasure to inviting her on the show today. So Amanda, thank you so much for uh, joining us. And thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. And thanks for all the kind words. I'm glad that you got a good laugh or two off my videos. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love the fact that you respond to people's comments and questions um, it, within that too. I think that's even more cool because you get the sense of like getting the audience involved with things and you're really, really good at that. So I'd love everybody to check out your channel if they haven't yet. Uh, we get thousands of downloads a month. So I'd love to help introduce my audience to you if people aren't, in, haven't been interested in TikTok or are, but I'd love to hear you share a little bit about your, your backstory. You're, um, you, you're a, new, a news anchor right out in Arkansas area. Yes, so that's my full-time job. A lot of people think I do TikTok for a living and that's not true. It's totally on the side, just for fun. I'm a full-time morning news anchor in Arkansas, Central Arkansas, and I wake up and do the morning shift. So I'm up at like three in the morning every day. I don't know how I have any energy to do the TikToks, but I guess a lot of Starbucks venties will do the trick. So I've been here for about uh, four years now and then I was a news anchor before this in Kansas and uh, was a Miss America contestant before that for the state of Kansas. And so I've had a lot of fun kind of getting to do really cool things and experience with media in different ways. So why not do a little TikTok on the side too? That's so awesome. No, I love that. It's, 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 it's great when you're passionate about something and then you can turn that passion into a hobby or even a business or a side business. Uh, Cause there's definitely ways that you can help monetize your channel. You might be doing that already. And I'd love to talk to you a little bit about, about that too, because it's just, you have so much fun content. And at this point, I'm sure people may be approaching you for brand deals and things like that. So I'd love to share how you, what you're doing on that side, but can you tell me like, when, when did it really start picking up on TikTok? Like, when were you like, oh, I'm just going to start creating content, share a little bit of backstory about when you started TikTok. So it actually wasn't even on my own starting it. So the, the TV station that I worked at said, you know, we're going to make a TikTok account. Amanda, can you do a little quick thing for this? And I did it and I was like, you know, this seems like it might be the future. I should probably make an account. And so I posted like very lame videos, like two videos, I think February of last year. It hasn't even been a year. This would have been about 11 months ago. And I didn't really touch it again. Um, I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> I didn't even use it yet. <laughs> who, who does when we get started? Right. <laughs> and then I was like, I saw that it was gaining a lot of momentum. I started doing stories about TikTok trends for better or worse. And I was like, I need to really start using this app because I think this could be the next Facebook, Instagram as those I, I think you know, are, are dying off in some ways. And I feel like TikTok is really kind of the new revolution for social media. So in April was when I started posting a little bit more consistently. I think it was the third or fourth video that one just like blew up. And it was of me doing my news anchor voice because that's something people have always said is you have such a unique voice. So I was like, okay, well, I'll do a little video about that. And then it was a million something views overnight. And I was like, okay, maybe I'm onto something here. I could just be myself and people want to watch that. So then I started posting more consistently. And uh, about a month or two later, that's when I had another video that hit about 13 million and then another 10 million video. And it just kind of spiraled from there. So I've only actually been consistently posting on the app for about eight months or so. Um, and now I've, I've reached about 1.2 million followers, really just being a silly, crazy me and giving people a behind the scenes look at what it's like to work in the news station. So I think people really like seeing that behind the scenes aspect of it too. I love that because it's, it's that essence that, because video is so powerful. It's that, that one media marketing tool that we put out there, we become vulnerable. And I always tell my clients, there's three C's really. It's like the courage to actually create the video, right? The clarity on what you're actually, what's your target audience? What do you want to create? And then the consistency aspect that you're saying, like, I've been consistent for eight months and that's really where the success component really comes in for successful like influencers on TikTok or even YouTube. It's, it's really those pieces because when people 
stop doing the consistency part, then you can lose following and or things like that. Or, you know, it, you just have more opportunities when you're consistent. So you're basically doing everything that, you know, an influencer should build on social media. And so yeah, that's really think- cool. And so you, you started that and then did you kind of migrate or invite people over to different places like like Instagram, are you able to build out in Facebook and things like that? How have you seen the growth uh, change on those platforms after kind of going viral on TikTok? So I started just really working hard on being consistent and not only posting on TikTok, but consistent in the types of videos that I was doing. I think it's really important for people to try different things that all are true to your personality or to your brand, but see what people start liking the most, watching the most, uh, looking at your analytics. That's what I did to see what content it is that was most successful. And then I just started doing creative things centered around that. And so once I started doing that more consistently and building up a brand so people knew who I was because I was still fairly new to TikTok. So I had to introduce people to myself and show them who I was over time, my consistent personality and my niche in a way. Uh, Then I started inviting people in the comment section of my TikTok videos. Hey, if you wanna see more of what I do news wise or just even in my personal life, go follow me on Instagram. I was looking back uh, to about a year ago at where my Instagram numbers and Facebook numbers were. And uh, of course I grew from zero to 1.2 million from the last year on TikTok, but just through the TikTok exposure and inviting people to my other pages, I went from about 60,000 on Facebook to 81,000. And then on my Instagram, I went from like 9,000 to now I have uh, nearly 33,000. So pretty significant growth across all platforms. Uh, especially when I have a video that goes viral on TikTok, that seems to be a good indicator that I can more successfully draw people to my other media pages as well. That's awesome. Have you, I'm sure you've been approached by brands and individuals and things for partnerships, potentially joint JVs or affiliate marketing. Uh, Have you taken on any of that type of of marketing or, um, you know, a side business as well? Are you, you primarily focused on, you know, being a news anchor face or is that something that interests you? I'd I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. So it's an interesting position because because I am a journalist full time, it's actually against my code of ethics in my industry to take any types of these deals. But in the past 10 months, I've had hundreds of companies reaching out to me asking everything from uh, clothing, makeup uh, to (laughs) animal items, because I have a cat, companies that want to work with me for that. I have a cat too. (laughs) Yeah, I love love cats. Um, (laughs) Even the the other day, someone approached me about um, like, it's not Teladoc, but a company similar to that that's trying to promote virtual medical appointments and things. So, and every, so hundreds of these, which unfortunately I've I've had to turn down, um, but it, it goes to show that people want people that are true to themselves. And everybody that has reached out to me says, we love what you're doing because you seem like you have a real personality that is you know really relatable and that you you could just talk and sell i've had so many people ask me too just can you voice this for me like we love your voice can you voice this or that you know so just being true to myself it's opened up a lot of doors really to all sorts of different types of businesses so if in the future that's something i'm interested i feel like i have more than enough opportunities but for now my main focus is the full-time gig uh doing the news and doing journalism that makes sense. And I, I can tell how passionate you are about that as well. So, I mean, yeah. always stick with your passion first too. And, you know, maybe when there are opportunities, depending on, you know, you said the code of conduct and stuff like that, there's so many things that you can utilize with that. You even creating an online course yeah. um, that teach people how to build their, their TikTok or creating an online funnel. Like there's so many things that, you know, TikTok influencers can utilize there. A lot of them are going after these brand deals and things like that. And I know you have a specific search situation with it, but like, it's just, there's so many opportunities out there for, for this growth. Like, you know, I'd be telling our clients, like example of a funnel is creating like a, a $37 tripwire product where you basically market a funnel where you're your page on there, you're providing value. It's kind of like a little masterclass or you can provide a free opt-in where you're building your email list too. And like, I could go on for, for hours. I feel like you could just exponentially grow with so many different opportunities because you have that like masterclass that goes into 
upsell of a course or you know you get private coaching for high level ticket sales that's what we do but you know it's just so, so many things so it's so interesting to hear you, you know what you're so passionate about this and you have opportunities so but um i totally understand and that it's piece really of it, cool but too, so many opportunities uh, yeah, and it's really cool too. I think working with people that are influencers, it gives the brands a little bit of freedom too, because almost every company that reached out to me really wanted me to have the autonomy to create things that fit my audience that would also work with their brand too. So yep. it, it really releases some of the companies from having to come up with all these ideas. If you can just find the person with the personality and the creativity and the ideas, they can include your product into the stuff that they're already doing that's attracting an audience. And so uh, that's been interesting. I've always thought about um, how that could work you know, for me in the future in some ways, but it's really unique because you get to tell a story about a product just by doing what you already do. And so it's natural and it doesn't seem forced. It, it's totally true. And one of the ways that, that we've been able to build a successful agency is the power of relationships, like putting those people that are, you know, that are like-minded, that, you know, are positive players that believe in what you do and making like introductions and opportunities, opening doors for people without expecting anything in return, right? You're, you give first, provide value first, and then build those relationships. So in partnerships, you know, we start with uh, joint ventures, you know, somebody that complements your brand, like you said, like creating content for a company that you, you believe in too. It's like partnering with those types of companies that, that really, you know, like, you're like, I actually believe in their mission. Yes, I'd like to do something with them rather than having all these people probably coming at you and you're like, I don't even believe in that product or I don't, you know, things like that. It's always be able to, because it's your choice to be like, yes, I'd love to have that opportunity, but find those joint ventures and then uh, referral connections. We had a, a room full on uh, Clubhouse last night where I was doing a, a talk on Clubhouse. Are, are you on Clubhouse yet? I tried to get on Clubhouse, but I'm still waiting to get accepted. So that's, that's I something. Will, I will send you an invite. How about that? Okay, I'll, I'll that. have their podcast. I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll let you in. Uh, but yeah, actually kind of be fun if you're up for it. We could do a, a total room. We did a, um, a, a room this morning on how video, PR, media, and influencers um, help basically bring the A-list or game. So it'd be great to invite you in if you're up for it. So totally fun. we'll talk after the podcast, but it's, it's so fun in there because yes, it's more of an exclusive site. You'll, you'll have people come in there, you know, you got to gosh, there's a bunch of celebrities that will just pop in and be like, hey, you know, like all of a sudden Soldier Boy's in your room and you're like, hey, <laughs> like, hey, Grant Cardone, you know, I actually know Grant, but it, it's, cool. it's kind of interesting. It gives that experience where you don't necessarily, people you can't necessarily, well, you can, but people that might not be able to reach specific types of people, it's just fun to be in a room listening to their ideas and business growth and uh, how they can help provide value and stuff like that. We had one last night all about connections. And so that's, what's really powerful about that. What's your, uh, what's been your favorite part about like building the, the TikTok channel? Honestly, meeting other TikTokers. I go on there and I have like a community of friends and it's interesting. You can tell that people who share similar interests really do have similar things that pop up on that FYP, the for you page, because I see other creators that I interact with a lot interacting on videos that are coming up on my for you page. So that's really fun. But also just on a practical side, I feel like what I've been able to do has brought a ton of new people as an audience to the television station I'm working on. And so, you know, I had, I did a video that was just asking people, hey, anybody living in Arkansas, did you see my page? I'd love for you to come watch or say, hey. And there was over, I think at this point, over 300 and something thousand people that watched the video and thousands, tens of thousands that responded. And so I'm meeting people virtually that are interacting with what I'm doing on a daily basis, not even on that particular app. So making connections with people around me, whether it's in my state, across the world has been super fun. That's awesome. Yeah, and no, I'd love to make some introductions for you if you're up for it on real, like getting you on other podcasts and stuff like that. Like I think you provide a lot of value. Obviously all of our clients have podcasts. But I think it'd be great. You have so much value to provide and uh, a great story too. So if you're up for that, I'd love to make some introductions for you um, to share your story to reach even more people. I'm connected to a lot of the digital space, YouTubers, and um, you know, podcasting industry. But I, you have you have, you've got such a, a glow to you. You're just like boom. I was like ah, like I heard her voice. I was like okay. I'm like she's got to do her broadcasting voice here on the show. <laughs> I promise. 
I cannot physically talk any other way. Like this has been my voice since I was little eight years old, Amanda dreaming of being a broadcaster one day. So everybody that meets me. Is, that too. I saw the one video where you're yeah. like, it's, you literally have the video. They're like, do this in your vo your regular voice and this in your, your <laughs> voice yeah. and you're like, in your car. We're like, uh, sounds the same. <laughs> like, I, I, don't, <laughs> I love it. How yeah. do you, how do you go through and choose the questions? Like, I'm sure you get so many questions fr from people and like, is there specific content or questions that pop out where you're like, oh, you know, this would be a great one to, you know, do a video on to respond to that, you know, you know, person that's following you. Like, how do you choose those usually? Well, sometimes people will ask a question on the page and you can see like that one got 2000 likes. So that means a lot of people probably want to know the answer to that particular question. So I kind of monitor those on all of my videos. Or if there's a question that I think is really funny and I just want to respond to for the heck of it, I'll do that. Uh, or questions that I see pop up a lot on you know multiple videos, I'll be like, okay, I should probably answer that question. A lot of people ask me questions, for example, about what my sleep schedule is like since I wake up so early to do the morning show. And I started seeing that over and over and over again. So I was like, I should probably respond to that. And so I did. And then you know a couple million views later, I realized, oh, wow, that was a question people really were interested in hearing about, which to me, I don't think about because it's just when I go to bed, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I was realize, like, how much sleep do you get? <laughs> not enough. <laughs> uh, yeah, but you know, it's just it's it's just kind of really knowing your audience, listening to the audience, paying attention to the comments, um, and then and answering questions, and then just having fun. Things that you think would be interesting to talk about too. Yeah, no, and you're saying every everything right that how you grow a following, listening to your audience first when we're working with people on on YouTube, right? So. We're always telling our clients like what is it that you believe people are actually searching for in you go youtube and google and then we're, our team does research on what people are actually searching for in in your industry right because it's really important to know your market know your industry and things like that so you're not just like throwing up stuff like spaghetti on the wall yes you've got your following going already but once you start hitting those points you're like seeing that pattern you're like i'm gonna create more videos on this like yes people want to create a video podcast so that's being searched a lot lately because of the pandemic you know so many people were confined to their you know offices and home offices you know during the pandemic it was a, a great opportunity for people to start youtube channels to start podcasts because more people were brought online they're looking for things searching for things and tiktok was a great pl pl platform obviously during uh, you know, the pandemic with things like that what uh what hashtags have you seen that do well maybe for somebody that might not be on TikTok or is thinking about it what hashtags have you seen that are most popular for TikTok users well the cool thing about TikTok that's very different than Instagram is they provide you each day with what hashtags are trending so for me that's really it's really influential because you can see what people are talking about. Whereas with Instagram, you really have to guess in some ways. Uh, I don't use the trending hashtags on TikTok nearly as much because I've really found a clear niche that I'm in. I will use them sometimes. I don't want to totally say that they're not useful, but um, I think once you figure out what your niche is after you started creating multiple videos, figure it out. Like if the content that you're making is like all about things that you do as a mom, hashtag mom, hashtag mom goals, things that you're seeing uh, from other creators, especially creators that you aspire to be like the hashtags that you're, they're using. For me, I always use hashtag news anchor or hashtag reporter, um, you know, things that are totally specific to my industry that I know people that watch me are watching, you know, outside of my videos. And so um, that's, that's really what I've been trying to do. I do a lot of videos too about just like body positivity or positivity about not wearing makeup, you know, and so I'll do hashtag no filter, hashtag makeup free, you know, things that I've seen other influencers that have a similar message do as well. And those have typically been pretty successful too. But I think the worst thing you can do is just pick random hashtags that you think are going to be super successful that don't actually relate to your videos. And then you end up just kind of wasting space on the caption area. So I've tried to avoid doing that and be more specific and it's paid off. And what, it, what kind of success have you seen with repurposing your TikTok over to IG Reels? Like, have you seen, like, I know what, by what we've noticed with algorithms and things like that, like TikTok Reels are what's going on and posting at least one of them a week to help, you know, drive new traffic. What have you seen with, with that? So at first I 
had posted an Instagram reel and I had repurposed it from TikTok and I really wasn't seeing much growth. You know, I'm used to TikTok where it's like an instantaneous <laughs> boom of views. And so I was like, oh, well, this isn't really useful, but I was like, I'm going to post them anyway. It's different on Instagram. It takes time. And so, yes, those views will come. And I had a video that I posted, it was probably two weeks ago, and it was just getting a couple thousand views, you know, it, which isn't that great for a typical performance on my page. And then, boom, out of nowhere, it was 100,000, 200,000. Now that video, two weeks after posting it, has hit a million. And so I think with Instagram Reels, it's absolutely incredible because you can repurpose things and it works. Uh, I don't get 100,000 on every video, but I still am getting tens of thousands. And you just have to wait a little bit longer. So they're not going to perform the same in the amount of time, but they've been pretty successful uh, so far. So I've only been doing this for a couple of weeks. I'm going to keep doing it and seeing, seeing what, where that takes me because I did not realize how powerful reels could be for growing my Instagram audience. And now I do. Yeah, no, we, we definitely noticed that with a, a change and shift with our clients um, the last like month and a half or so. It's just kind of, it, like you said, it's kind of a hit or miss sometimes, but it'll, it will grow. And all of a sudden, like a couple of weeks later, you're like, oh, oh, there, there's more than I thought, you know? <laughs> so I'm like, that's cool. You know, and it would be interesting because like for myself, I haven't built like a large TikTok. I haven't focused on that yet, but we actually just recorded uh, some fun content that my team's going to start utilizing and posting and stuff like that. And then we'll repurpose it over there. So I'm excited to see what kind of results can, can drive there too. Um, if you were to share, like, I know you've provided so many golden nuggets here with this episode, but if you were to tell um, or educate people that maybe they have a TikTok, maybe they've got like a couple thousand followers and they're, they're trying, maybe they're spinning their wheels a little too much. Like, what would you say, like three tips maybe that they could take away that they could really focus on for building that? I know you've already shared so many that they could basically put into the three tips, but what would you recap on saying like three things that would help someone grow right now that really would love to, to grow their TikTok? I think the first thing is try a couple different videos that all fit your personality type or your brand and see which one performs the best. Once you find a video that performs fairly well compared to the other ones, recreate that video in different ways. You will see people come to it because they already liked that style. So just keep building off of that. The second thing I would say is TikTok is unique. You cannot post on TikTok similar things that you would on uh, Facebook, for example. It's a totally different vibe. So when you're on there, they want authenticity on TikTok. They don't want to feel like you're faking it or that you're being too professional or too cool. They want raw authenticity. And so you have to make sure that your content doesn't seem too curated or too professional to where it's like, I don't want to be filled with an advertisement or something that doesn't seem genuine. And then I think the third thing uh, would be to interact with people all the time that are commenting on your TikTok videos. As you post them, respond because those initial people that respond to your videos are going to be your consistent audience. And I've learned that it, it doesn't always matter how many followers you have, but if you have a really high level of engagement from people that like what you're doing and you're interacting with them, those are going to be solid people that help you grow in the end, that are going to share your videos, that are going to bring your engagement up, which can impact if your videos make it on the For You page or not. Um, and then I'm going to give a quick fourth one because I found this to be really important. I really believe keep those videos under 15 seconds. Uh, don't make it any shorter than seven, but don't make it longer than 15 if you can, because I've seen views just totally drop off once you get past that 15 second mark. So they want quick. The average watch time is <laughs> not very much anymore. And so uh, don't drag things too long or people won't watch the video to completion. Well, they, well, they do say that people have the attention span of a goldfish. What is that, like five or six seconds at that point? Yeah, it ain't much. <laughs> when, when you're creating your, your content and, and editing those, do you edit those within the app or do you use another app to uh, edit your videos? Um, I have used InShot a couple times for very few things, but most of the time I edit them in the app directly. Like mm -hmm. I said, I don't... I'm in, it's also kind of the content that I make doesn't really need fancy editing or anything. You can do quite a bit just using what they provide. But I know InShot is really popular for people that, you know, want to put a little bit more of a creative spin or do things that are a little bit more, um, I don't know, technically savvy. But for the content I create specifically, 
uh, I, it's pretty simple, which I like because I don't want to work that hard and, you know, spend a lot of time just putting the videos together. I want to be more uh, in, in, interactive with the people that I'm actually talking to rather than, you know, doing all the technical stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a 15 second video is a lot easier than a 90 minute documentary. <laughs> I was like, that was in my past. <laughs> well, I mean, and I come from news where, you know, it takes a full eight hour day to put together a minute and 30 news package. So I was like, <laughs> I know how long it people take. know. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, oh, yeah, no, it's the things that people don't really think about like behind the scenes of like yeah. how, how much like thought actually goes into content because mm -hmm. some people uh, like, you know, the guy with the cranberry juice that went viral, you know, on TikTok, you, you know, like, like, what was, it? I'm sure that he wasn't really thinking anything other than here's a, one of my songs and <laughs> here's a skateboard and going, you know, and then he gets these deals, like that changed his life. And I'm sure plenty of people are trying to spin their wheels about, you know, something that's creative or, or fun or joining in on some of the challenges or something. Maybe you're going to do like one of JLo's dance challenges or something like have you ever like I know you uh, specify on your specific niche but have you ever joined in on any other type of content with some of the trending challenges by chance yeah I've done a couple of the challenges you know something <laughs> which you know it's sometimes you even if you aren't good at those challenges that can be funny too yesterday there's this dance trend that's going around with this song that you know people that are actually good dancers do well I make fun of the fact that I'm not a good dancer and so I'm not I either girl <laughs> so, you know people are out there doing this dance like 100% here and I like literally put in 10% effort and that was kind of the joke and it's not even been 24 hours yet and now that has 250,000 views and so I'm in a trend but I'm putting my own spin on it and uh, you know, making people laugh. And so I'm staying true to who I am while participating in a trend that probably wouldn't be something I would normally do. And so I do it every once in a while for sure. And then you gotta put your own creative spin on it. Have you found yourself, like I know some people when they start getting going with video content and things like that, like that C that I mentioned earlier about courage, like taking the courage to actually <laughs> go in there. Like, what was your thoughts initially? Like, did you ever have any of those like fearful thoughts of like naysayers and things like that coming up? Cause I'm sure that you've gotten comments, like some people are like super supportive and fun and stuff. And I'm sure this has happened with me and YouTube too. Like, like what has that been like for you to be a, I'm, I'm a confident person. So I'm just like, what next? <laughs> like, you know, how do how do you react and do you react to people or do you just block them? Like people that obviously don't pay, I don't pay attention to them, but what, what do you do when, when things like that happen? I think for me in my career, it's been extra challenging because I think on one side, you have a camp of people that says, Amanda, you're a journalist. You have to be straight laced, you know, very serious all the time. But then I've never been that person. I've always been kind of a going against the grain innovator that says, guess what? Things are changing and people don't want to watch robotic people on television anymore. They want somebody that they're going to go to Instagram or TikTok or Facebook and see what they're doing as like a real human being. And so I started doing that two years ago with my social media and I have been doing it now with TikTok. And I truly believe like for all the people that have said, you better be careful, Amanda, because you know, you, it, you're going to, if you're too funny or you're too like, yourself, you know, it's, it might hurt you in the end. And I have fought against that this whole time. And I think it's actually been extremely beneficial and because I'm sorry, but there's not many other people out there that have millions of followers just because they're just being themselves, you know, and I think it's been positive. So yes, the criticism is real, was real, but the confidence to be who you truly are wins every single time. And I am just so strong about that. And I want everyone to just put all of that aside and trust your gut. Now don't, don't do things inappropriate. I don't use cuss. I don't use any music with cussing. I don't do anything that goes against my values or do anything, you know, that might be sketchy. <laughs> I realize people can Google anything. <laughs> um, <laughs> if I wouldn't want it on TV. I ain't going to do it. Um, but you know, it, it, it has been to my benefit to truly just go for it and be myself, belly laugh all the way through and, and trust the process. I, I love that. Yeah, no, I, I, I firmly believe in the same values that you do. And it's, it's really great to be able to do things like when I started building more influence with Facebook Live, when Facebook Live, the algorithms pushed out, you know, 
I would always just be my fun Woody self, you know, yes, some of my content's like professional to the point, but I want pe to get people to a point within like a four or five minute YouTube video versus going in for like 10, 20 minutes, like trying to teach, like people are looking for stuff that's to the point that you provide value and stuff like that. So yes, we have the, the professional videos, like you're, you're on the TV, things like that. So like you have this persona, but then it's so fun on these other apps because they get to know your personality and be able to see how you interact and you know laugh and you know they feel like they know you you know it, it's that essence of like I feel like I'm their friend you know or somebody like be like oh you know like I know Amanda or you know, whatever like it, it's good to f get that essence of feeling because like I don't know about you but when you receive messages like I love receiving messages where people are like you totally inspired me to do a Facebook live or you totally inspired me to start my YouTube channel or like I love it when people you know say those types of things. Like I love appreciation, I'm a words of affirmation person over here, but, <laughs> but on that sense, it's like, you know, when, when I get that, I get fired up and I want to create more video content. When I see people saying like, Oh, I love your content. I subscribe to your channel. Like, I love this. Like that's what pumps me up and fires me up. I'm sure that helps you too. So. Oh yeah. One of my favorite comments, and I've gotten this a lot of times now, which just blows my mind is people that said, I've never watched local news before, but now that I've seen your videos, I want to. I want to do these things. And so you can do things that haven't been done and create results that would never have happened just because you took a risk. Because mm -hmm. everybody loves to be a naysayer when they're not doing something. <laughs> but when <laughs> they're watching, you know, but when somebody actually goes for it and does it, you know, that's when incredible things happen. Well, and people can, this has been ever since internet was made, people can go and hide behind a profile and comment and be a naysayer. But when you call them out, sometimes they're like, you know what? You're right. <laughs> like, where do I have the, the, the privilege to say this? I haven't done this yet. Or right. I haven't tried yeah. it. Right. So it, it's just, it's always understanding people are I think lashing out for their own from their own fears you know there that they could be a state of like jealousy or something or like they want that you know they might want what what you're creating but they're they're afraid to step out and i just always encourage people like if you want to try something if you want to do something you have to go out there and have the courage to just do it once and once you do it once then you're like oh that was easy right <laughs> and then have that clarity like i said about how, what, what is it that you, you obviously know your market, you know, you've done polls, you've asked your, your uh, like, the audience members, like what they want to, to see, because once you feed that, then you're able to, to help them grow. And then they're sharing it out there. Like, Hey, you know, like I said, my business partner was sending me text messages of your videos and here you are with your mom. And I was like, now this is fun. I could probably get my mom in here. <laughs> you know, I'll be like, mom, you want to do a video with me? So. <laughs> Yeah, my mom still, I don't think, has forgiven me for dragging her into my TikTok fun. But I was like, mom, they love you. They, people still are like, mom, we want your mom. Yeah, it's just being vulnerable for sure. Well, I appreciate you so much, Amanda, just for joining us today. Is there any last, like, inspiring, uh, you know, action to share with the audience before we wrap up today? I would just say have the courage to be who you truly are. This world is going to try to make you be somebody that you may be not, I mean, especially with social media, with all the trends, with what you're seeing other influencers doing, that's the least important thing. It's just, if you can have the courage to be who you truly are and make content that feeds your soul and that you can wake up every morning and be excited to do, like that is the stuff. That's where the exciting things happen. And that's where people see your authenticity. So just, that's my favorite, one of my favorite quotes, just have the courage to be who you truly are. And I believe that that will help guide the rest of your life in a positive direction. And it's going well so far for me. So I'm going to keep doing it. Well, I love it. And so grateful for you to, to join us today. And um, we'll definitely be able to share that episode out. We'll definitely drop your links in the description below so that people can connect with you and, and uh, you know, just get to see your, your beautiful shine and, and laughter and humor and stuff like that. So I'm so excited to introduce you uh, to my audience when this releases. And um, yeah, no, I, I love what you're doing and just keep up the great work and just, uh, yeah, you're very inspiring. So I just appreciate you again. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. And if anybody that's watching want to reach out to me on social media, I do respond to DMs. So uh, if you have a question, just let me know. I'll do my best to respond as quick as I can.